my urologist today, Dr. Gareth Reed, inside the Women's Health Check as we look at Prostate Awareness Month. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome my urologist, Dr. Gareth Reed. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Reed. How are you? I am blessed. I am well. Uh, may I also just say happy birthday to my friend and colleague, Chrisan. Yes. Um, all the best to her. She's a wonderful person. She really is. And she's so flossing right now at some hotel. <laughs> I, I, I'm proud of her. You know, when it's your birthday and you can take the day and have a holiday, you know you're doing well. You're doing something right. <laughs> Definitely. So how are you? It's been some crazy times. And I know you have about 500 children. So I have to check in on you, Doc. You know, how are you? How are your children? Um, all is well. Um, you know, from my work standpoint i'm sure you know well we all are experiencing it this pandemic mm. um you know it is it's troubling times directly indirectly especially with our men and their prostate because we've kind of had to you know hold off on quite a few things mm. um in the pandemic so it, it, it is a challenging time but we will all get through it that's so, so yeah. true that's so true but doing well otherwise oh good i'm happy and your prostate's okay yeah, it seems so. Seems to be. All right. Well, at least you know how to check it. <laughs> For those who Not are listening. Myself, oh, you don't check it on yourself. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the urologist has to go to a urologist, okay? Yes. Uh, if you didn't know, now you know. But let's look at that. It's Prostate Awareness Month, and we want healthy prostates running around in our country. So let's start at the very beginning um, by explaining what, is the prostate what wh why is it there what is it good for and then tell me some of the patterns that we're seeing in our country and the world who is mostly affected and what do we do to treat it and check it early so i'm going to hand the microphone to you dr reed okay thanks Empress. so the prostate is a small gland or it usually starts off as a small little organ that or rather gland that sits below the bladder um, and its main purpose is really for, uh, it acts as a conduit, so all of your semen that's produced when you, you know, you have sex, you ejaculate, that fluid that comes out, everything comes via the prostate. So the sperms are included in there, some fluid that comes from um, the prostate and some from the seminal vesicles. And the purpose of the prostate is to provide um, some enzymes that are useful in terms of helping to liquefy the, the semen itself to allow for sperm to swim. So that its primary role is for fertility. Mm. Um, it does have other roles, you know, roles in terms of helping men with, with their continence, so the ability to hold the urine. Um, and the, theoretically, there's some discussion about it providing a little bit to help with your immune system with regards to urination, things like that. Mm. But that's the main thing that, that its purpose. Um, Every man is born with one. It's just part of that Y chromosome. Every man has a prostate. Let's explain where it is, because I, I heard some um, men talking once about, yeah, man, my prostate. They thought their scrotum was their prostate. So let's explain where right. in the body it is. So the prostate is not something you can feel um, by touching the abdomen. It actually just sits right below your bladder, sitting right in, that, in the pelvic area. Mm -hmm. so if you feel that bone, what we call a pubic bone, mm -hmm. right in the center there, the prostate sits behind that area. Mm. Right. Okay. So it, it, if you finish having children and, uh, you know, well, let's, before we go, who is mostly affected by prostate cancer and how, how okay. does it happen? Right. So a couple of things you, you asked me as well in terms of how common is it, how, mm. how, you know. So here in Jamaica, prostate cancer is the commonest cancer by far um, of all cancers. Um, among men, women, children, just, you know, just by sheer numbers, it's, it's the highest number of cancer cases. And that wouldn't be that bad, but the bigger problem is when you look on cancer deaths, prostate mm -hmm. cancer leads, um, leads all cancers in Jamaica. Worldwide, it's probably the second commonest cancer diagnosis um, in the world. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very common, especially here in Jamaica. So who gets prostate cancer? Um, there are a number of little factors that contribute to it. So the older you are, the higher your risk. So the older you, you get, there definitely is a higher risk of developing prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. For the, the, the black population, there seems to be a little bit of a predominant, as in prostate cancer seems to be more predominant, so more, more common in our, our population, and it's more um, sometimes thought to be a little more aggressive as well. 
as are as, as other um, races and ethnicities um, are there. Um, there's definitely a, a familial and a genetic side to things. So if you have a family history of prostate cancer, it does increase your risk of developing prostate cancer as well. So, you know, that's probably some of the, the, the more common things in terms of things that you can't change. Mm. Um, and then there's certain lifestyle and risk factors that are associated with a higher incidence, a higher number of prostate cancer cases um, being developed. What are so, some of those lifestyle um, changes that we can make or what lifestyle behaviors contribute? Risk factors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Risk factors. So, um, a big one is, so, you know, and you hear this preaching, everything, cardiovascular health, everybody, you know, good exercise on that um, helps to decrease your chances. Poor exercise on that worsens them. So it's definitely, you know, there are a lot of studies that show a significant association with obesity. Mm. Um, men who smoke quite a bit, they are a higher risk of developing prostate cancer. And even if they do develop it, some a little more aggressive, they perform worse with it. So those are some of just the the lifestyle changes that we can consider when we're thinking of prevention or trying to decrease the risk of developing prostate cancer. It's all about healthy living, good diet, lots of fruits and vegetables, um, less red meat, less carbs, and a lot more exercise. I think those are some of the the things that that we can encourage our population starting young. You know, you you, you can't start at 50 and hope for those changes. You want to start at earlier, so in your 30s, your 40s, um, just you know, healthy living throughout your life limits mm. or decreases those, you know, these, these porous factors. All right, Doc, I want you to stay with me. We're going to take a quick break. Um, this is very important, and we need to we need to encourage our men to go and get their prostate checked. I mean, it's highly prevalent, my listeners, in Jamaica. It's a leading cause of cancer-related deaths. You heard it from Dr. Reed, our urologist. So we're going to take a break and come back and tell you what you need to do to, make, to check early. What you need to do if you see signs that you could have prostate cancer. We have the answers here as we look at prostate cancer awareness in this month, September, inside our Women's Health Check. Because you know what? Every woman wants a healthy man. We're soon come. All righty. We have uh, Dr. Gareth Reed inside the Women's Health Check, my urologist, putting the spotlight on our men today as we look at prostate cancer awareness in the month of September. We have to give you this information, and if we have to do it every single day, right, so we can decrease the number of deaths, right, cancer-related deaths, you know, in this country, then we're going to do it because prostate cancer is highly prevalent in Jamaica. So we need to talk about it. And I know... My listeners, if I ask you, to the men listening right now, have you gone and checked your prostate? I know many of you are saying no. And women, when you go home, ask your man. And I'm going to give you my urologist's number. Yeah, so you could check him. And he's had his check, but somebody else had to check it for him because he can't check on himself. So you can't check yourself at home. <laughs> so, uh, Doc, let's pick up on that one. Uh, how, what are some of the signs that somebody could have prostate cancer? And what do we do next? Okay, so... Something that, you know, and in terms of that question, it's very, very important because the, the time to catch prostate cancer is when it's early, when it's localized, when it hasn't gone outside of the prostate. And the symptom, the most common symptom you'll get at that stage is no symptom whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And that is why I think it contributes to why men pick up prostate cancer so late. Why is it that it's so hard um, to treat at that point? Because when it's localized, if you treat it at that point, the likelihood that in five years that you will still be alive without any cancer and be cancer-free is almost 100%. As opposed to if it has spread outside the prostate, that number falls maybe down to about 30%, um, you know, if it has metastasized, it's that spread. Mm. So the commonest symptom is no symptom at all in its earliest stage, which is why we push a lot of prostate cancer screening which is essentially trying to detect the cancer in its early stage before it becomes symptomatic. That being said, other symptoms that you can have now when it's you know becoming a little bit of a problem are very similar to just the prostate being enlarged. So you can find you start having urinary issues. So passing the urine more frequently, more difficult to pass urine. You might see blood in the urine. Some men will experience other issues, pain, pain on urination, pain in the lower back. You start getting general symptoms now if it has spread in terms of weight loss, 
um, and other, you know, other little features. You might start to find erections becoming a problem. So is that, you know, early erectile dysfunction can be as a result of prostate cancer as well. Mm. So those are some of the things. But it's, it's the, the attempt is to try and find this thing out before you reach that symptomatic stage. So, And mm. uh, wh- wh- how often and when should a man start screening for prostate? And what does the screening look like? How do you check? I know many men have a fear of the process. So let, let's, go to, let's go there now. At okay. what age do you start? And how often do you have to check and screen Take me through that. All right. So here in Jamaica, um, because we are a high-risk population, both by our ethnicity as well as our numbers, um, we recommend starting at the age of 40. And this is an annual test. So once a year, you come in to get a prostate-specific antigen, which is a simple blood test, as well as a digital rectal examination, so we can feel the prostate. And we tend to combine those two to give us our, our most accurate information as to the, the possibility of you having prostate cancer. Mm. We generally do that for about from starting age 40, and, and our general cutoff is say, at about 75. So if it's that, you know, you've been screened all these years and reached 75, your numbers are normal, your prostate examination is normal, we tend to stop. Mm. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a little more than just the age as, as a specific number. What we look for is really um, length of life. So if we think you're going to live for another 10 years, um, we continue screening, but we generally stop when we think that it's, it's unlikely that, you know, you might just pass from natural causes. Um, you've never developed prostate cancer, then we leave you alone unless you start getting any symptoms. Okay. And that general cutoff is about 75. Okay. I know many men are afraid of the rectal examination. So tell me about the digital rectal exam that you mentioned. Okay. So it's a fairly simple test. Um, it, it can be done with the patient either lying on his side or even standing. Um, pass a small finger um, in the back passage, well lubricated, so it's minimal discomfort. Um, and I have yet to meet that patient who I've done it on who, you know, thought that it was very, very painful. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very fairly straightforward process. As I said, most of the men, it's not for pain. It's more the, 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 the fear um, of having that done to them. Mm-hmm. And, and I, you know, I just want to reassure men that, yes, it, you know, it's an uncomfortable thought, but it's, it's quick and it's over long before you know it. And the benefit you'll get from it is so much more than um, the risk of not having it done. That's right. That being said, even if a man, you know, there's some men who are just absolutely against rectal examination. And for those men, I encourage you to get it, but if you absolutely do not want to do it, at least get the PSA done, the prostate-specific antigen, Mm -hmm. because it will give us some information into, you know, where we should go from here. Right. Yeah. Do something. Do something. uh, something. Yeah. How long long is a session? So when we come in now, the men come in, they have a consultation with their urologist. I'm trying to get men to change their behaviors and attitudes to health care. Because I noticed yeah. that men don't really want to go doctor. They don't, you know, we women have to go and have our pap smears every minute. Men aren't checking, you know, um, as much as we are. So I want to change that attitude. So let's walk through. We come in, we would have a consultation. What's next? Um, so the consultation probably lasts about 15 minutes mm-hmm. to 20. Um, and most of that consultation is trying to just dive into your background, you know, checking on, on any urinary issues, things that you may not have even realized was a problem, um, checking on your like, general chronic illnesses, any symptoms associated with prostate cancer, family history. Um, then we'll have a brief examination, which includes examining not just the prostate itself, but the abdomen and the genitals. Um, and then afterwards, we generally send you to go and have your uh, PSA. Um, to be honest, most men we tend to see usually come in with their PSA, but that's fine as well. They could just come for a checkup. Then we send them off to get that PSA done. Um, we'll review it. If everything is normal, then that's fine. We, we, next time we see it is one year's time. All um, right. And we'll move forward. And we move right. forward, hopefully, with no signs of any cancer. Okay? That's how we want to move forward. So, Doc, uh, people can use their health insurance to cover this? Yes, yes. Prostate cancer is definitely well covered um, by health insurance, um, both in terms of the, the test investigations um, and then um, the treatment options that are out there. Okay. Also, I meant to mention, if it is that you do have an abnormal test, 
our next step is to try and confirm whether or not there's cancer in the prostate, which usually involves um, a prostate biopsy. Okay. And are there many options in Jamaica across the island for people to see urologists? Uh, do we have them in the government clinics as well as the private? And what would be a cost at the private uh, a private session, the average cost? Okay. So it's definitely available in the public setting. Um, the only thing I would recommend or encourage, you know, from a government perspective is to try and get more urologists in public health care. We have them at University, Kingston Public Hospital, Spanish Town. Uh, Mandeville and Cornwall Regional, but that's it. That's it for the island. So you find some of our clinics, so clear pH, even at university, they are really, you know, quite full. Mm-hmm. Um, so outside of that, there's a semi-private option. So for screening, there's the Jamaica Cancer Society that offers screening generally in the country um, for prostate cancer, especially. And that's a well-run, well-organized clinic. Um, most of us, most of the urologists, we volunteer at the Cancer Society and we do monthly screening um, of men. And, and, you know, generally that's pretty well attended. Excellent. Outside of that, there's a private setting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, costs, I think, will vary uh, depending on location, where you did this, where you went, who, you know, which of the urologists. Everybody kind of has a different costing. So it would be hard to give you an uh, exact figure. Um, but I'd say generally it would range somewhere between you know, six, ten to ten thousand, somewhere, you know, depending okay. on who you who you see. Okay. All right. Well, I want to organize a very, I want to do a special doc and I like to put people on the spot because some of my men here at Nationwide, I don't think I've had their prostate check this week or this year. So I want to know if you can get a little discount to some of my colleagues. <laughs> Definitely, we can discuss it. There's no problem. Yay! Yeah, I got a discount for my men and their <laughs> prostate. Woo! Yeah! I don't think they're cheering. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hear them cheering. Them cheering one. Them cheering okay, one. Okay. They're they're excited. I'm going to get them all lined up and book their appointments for them. Doc, I want to thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate you. Uh, could you put out your office number? Because I know some listeners want to call and book in. Um, I really want my listeners to call and book an appointment. Please. What's your office number, Doc? All right, so I'm primarily based up at the university, but office number wise, you could get me at 978 4272. All right, or find him at the university hospital. Uh, Dr. Reed, thank you so much. Enough love to your beautiful family, and uh, I'm sure you'll be checking a lot of prostates. Thanks to this show. All right. Because I'm going to get my colleagues out there. We need to deal with this, my Jamaican men. And it's up to the women to push the men to go and book the appointment. Dr. Reed, take care. Thanks for having me. Impression. Yeah. I appreciate you. All right. To all my healthy prostate, prostate, prostate men out there, let me hear you say yay. All right. We need healthy prostates running around here.